Hello everyone and welcome back to Witch Fix. We are back again for a back 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 a rootin' good time and by that I mean I finally calmed down enough after reviewing The House of Winter to get back into the circle of three series of books by Isabel Bird because I mean honestly it was like that was the 11th one there are only 15 in the series I have the remaining books just sitting on my shelf and after taking a break from reading and watching everything there is about witches and reading a few chick -lit novels and just letting myself just breathe a little bit and just calm down and de-stress from the whole thing I thought you know what you do really want to finish the series you want to know what happens to this trio of sometimes quite exasperating teenage girls so <laughs> dive back in and read book 12 so this episode covers my experience of reading book 12 of the Circle of Three series, written in the stars. And to be honest, I wasn't really looking forward to this one because it's all about astrology, uh, at least according to the blurb. So the blurb is astrology. The study of the stars is said to reveal the truth of the universe. Cooper, Kate and Annie find this to be alarmingly true and their progress on the Wiccan path is nearly undone by what the stars tell them. I don't know who wrote the blurb. Clearly someone who hadn't read the book because although astrology is the thing that they are studying in Wicca class, it's not hugely relevant to the actual plot of the book except in one way which, spoiler alert, we're going to discuss in a second. Also, the fact that it says that their progress on the Wiccan path is nearly undone, um, nothing akin to that actually happens in the book. Um, it all seems to be picking up where it left off in book 10. And I say book 10 and not book 11 because it seems like book 11 was like a weird moment for the author because I think you could literally read book 10 and then go into this one and not actually miss anything at all. Like the... The House of Winter is barely mentioned and there's a point where Kate is like oh hey you know how a little while ago at Yule I thought I was over you Annie kissing my boyfriend um it turns out I'm not it was just plot relevant for me to not care about that so that we could do some sort of weird ghost story book but enough about that book because it's it, it doesn't matter anymore it's gone I lived through it it's the end so if you're asking yourself, what is this book about if not astrology, then I don't really know. It seems to be another one of those pairs of books that we've had through the series where one of them sets up a lot of issues that get dealt with in the next book. Because a lot of issues do get brought up in this that are new to the series. So to kick things off right at the very start of the book, Annie finds out that her aunt is marrying the author who um, now lives in Annie's old house in San Francisco, which got burnt down when her parents died. Uh, they're getting married. Um, they've actually only known each other at this point for three months because it's New Year at the start of this book and they met at Samhain, which is the end of October. So they've known each other like maybe two months, uh, but they're getting married. So that will happen very quickly. And so Annie's a bit worried about where she's going to end up living and all the rest of it. And yeah, that doesn't really get solved in this book. So I'm, I'm guessing that comes up in the next one. But Basically, it's all up in the air. She could be moving to San Francisco. She could be staying put. We don't know. My slightly neglected, hopeful little tree of, of lesbian wishes for the series, which is an odd phrase and I don't really know where I was going with that. But anywho, remember back in like book two when I thought that Cooper and Annie were going to get together? Well, that didn't happen, obviously, because apparently Tyler just has magnetic fucking lips. But we do have some lesbian stuff going on in this book in that Cooper's new friend, Jane, who you might remember is the Jewish girl that she met um, a couple of books ago, Jewish and Wiccan. But um, it turns out she is a lesbian or bi. She's not really sure of it herself. Um, but because she seems to say that she's mostly attracted to women, I'm going to go with lesbian just for the moment. Um, it's not really discussed that much in the book, so we don't know that much. But we do find out that Jane has romantic feelings towards women and has just been through a horrible breakup. And I'm going to put a trigger warning in here because there is mention of an attempt at suicide because uh, Cooper has a little bit of a falling out with Jane. And the next thing she knows, she's calling to apologise. She's told Jane has been taken to hospital because she's tried to kill herself. And she discusses this with Jane later because uh, Jane's fine. 
it's all okay but um it's a quite interesting in that this book kind of looks at the reasons behind like depression and those feelings as well um which is quite interesting as well as how it feels when you find out that someone you know is gay or maybe they have a different gender identity or various other things that can kind of sort of change how you view that person not necessarily in a negative way but in the sense that what you think you know about that person is irreparably altered in some way neither for better or for worse but you do have to get used to it and the way that they've discussed that is quite mature and it's quite a a nice thing to have in the book I think it'd be very useful for young adults to read and it's very clear at that point that the author has experience of being in the LGBT community so that's all very good and I quite like that element of the story. There's continual friction between Kate and Annie with regards to Tyler and his aforementioned magnetic lips but I don't know about anyone else here but I'm kind of bored of that so I'm not really going to mention it but stuff's happening there. Now the actual astrology element of the book is basically that they're studying astrology specifically Annie gets her chart done as an example at the Wicca class and this leads her to discuss with her aunt that the lady who read her chart said that she had two siblings and Annie only has one sister but then it turns out and her aunt tells her this that before her parents were married um, they had another child and put it up for adoption another girl who would at the point of the book be 23 so older than Annie and Annie decides to research and find her older sister um, which she manages to do by the end of the book uh, she uncovers that it's not someone we already know so it's it's not really that much of a, a big shock but again that's something that's probably going to become more relevant in later books on the Cooper side of things, she is trying to decide whether she wants to go to college near where her boyfriend's going to have to go to college. Uh, but also her mum, who her parents got divorced in a previous book, uh, her mum has started to drink quite heavily. And that's another issue that probably dealt with in the next book. But again, it's quite interesting to see how she approaches dealing with that and she goes to talk to her dad about it and the dad tries to like intervene and, and talk to her, her mum and I was quite happy with that in terms of the maturity level and how it was handled and I think maybe it would be something that would be helpful to young adult readers as well so I was glad that we were branching out in terms of issues there was a lot of drama being built up it is quite a shame that none of that drama kind of reached fruition in the book there isn't even really any kind of Wiccan or magical plot that reaches a climax in the book like usually they have um some sort of disaster going on with magic like annie getting possessed by freya or spells backfiring or them trying to work out what a tarot reading means and screwing everything up for other people that doesn't happen in this the core element the wiccan element of the story i think is meant to be astrology but it's not really mentioned that much and they have a little bit of a conversation about whether things are predestined or whether we make our own destinies. But that's very similar to or identical to the conversations they had in book four, what the cards said about whether your life is written when you have a tarot reading, that everything that's out in there in the cards has to come true. So that was basically just a rehash and nothing comes of it anyway. They don't try and do any like experiments to see whether that is accurate they don't talk to anyone about it it just kind of sits there as a conversation that they have had loath as i am to mention any more of the kate tyler scott drama which is an element of the books that i have never been interested in because i'm not 14 and even when i was 14 i didn't give a shit um i do want to mention that most of the book kate is kind of struggling with her feelings about how she feels about annie and tyler and the fact that they cheated on her together but by the end of the book, Kate comes to quite an important realisation, which is that all the times that she's been struggling over picking Scott or picking Tyler or whatever, she's been relying on having a boyfriend or having this romantic relationship to make her feel special. And that's been the whole point of it, that she kind of built her identity based around which one of them she was seeing and what was happening in that relationship. And at the end of the book, she basically just decides that she's happy to define herself and that she doesn't need a relationship to feel special because she now feels special just 
as a person because she has her own interests and her own life and she's just doing her own thing and again quite a nice thing to have included in a story for young adults probably more aimed at like teenage girls I wish it hadn't taken until book 12 for Kate to realise that. It felt like that could have happened a whole lot sooner and a whole lot faster. But at least it happened now. So hopefully we'll never have to hear about Tyler and his magnetic lips again. Anywho, I decided that I wanted to do like a little bit of a read from sort of a quarter of the way into the book around page 65. Just the bit that is actually about astrology and what they're actually saying about it. So um, just in case, you know, people had an interest in them and also because I see a lot of Mercury retrograde memes around on Instagram and I thought this bit because it mentions Mercury retrograde would be quite interesting as like a, a descriptor of what that's actually about, which um, might be helpful to some people. Isn't that just an old wives tale? asked Kate, you know, like werewolves coming out with the moon. Yes and no, Olivia replied. There's a lot of scientific evidence that the moon does affect how people behave. For example, many hospital emergency rooms report an increase in cases on nights when the moon, if, when the moon is full, and it's been shown that people's brain waves do sometimes change with the moon's phases. What does all this have to do with astrology? Someone asked. Olivia held up her finger. I'm getting to that, she said. Many of you probably think of astrology the way most people think about it as the horoscopes you read in the paper. A lot of heads nodded in response to her statement and several people laughed. Olivia smiled. Obviously horoscopes are part of astrology, she said. Unfortunately, they're probably the most unreliable part, at least the ones you read in the papers are. The problem is that those horoscopes have to be very general, so they can be applied to as many readers as possible. Yes, there is some useful information in them, if you know how to use it correctly. But essentially, newspaper horoscopes are about as in-depth as your typical supermarket tabloid is. That's too bad, Cooper remarked. Mine said I was going to have some good luck in all things today. Olivia smiled. When's your birthday? She asked. April 28th, Cooper told her. Taurus, Olivia said. The bull. She thought for a minute. Actually, your luck right now probably isn't so great. My guess is that you're finding yourself running into a few obstacles that you feel like charging right through. But no, you can't. Cooper nodded approvingly. Actually, that's pretty much it, she said. How did you know? Olivia adjusted her glasses. I sort of cheated, she said. What does that mean in the real world? Cooper asked her. Well, Mercury, as you know, was the messenger of the gods, Olivia explained. The planet Mercury, which is named for him, has an enormous influence on things like communication and travel. So when Mercury starts to go backward, Things relating to those two areas get a little mixed up. Mixed up how? asked Kate. Well, Olivia said, could be a lot of different things. You might have more misunderstandings than usual with people. You might find you have trouble meeting deadlines and projects or that your computer breaks down for no apparent reason. So that's basically the only part of the book that really talks about astrology there's a bit later on where Annie gets her reading and the woman kind of goes through it with her and says like oh because of these planets I can tell that something traumatic happened with water when you were five and a few other little bits like that I've never actually done an astrological chart for myself I do read horoscopes uh, when they're in like magazines and stuff mostly spirit and destiny magazine because those horoscopes are quite long but yeah they are those ones that just have to be very generic and general and not terribly accurate all the time I wouldn't say that it's something that I'm really keen to find out more about because it seems to be very mathematically based uh, I tend to like things that are more to do with um, more to do with intuition and making things and doing things uh, and very physical can you guess that I'm an earth sign can you guess that I'm a Taurus it's true. Uh, so I tend to like those things more and things that are to do with like maths and geography and all those kind of itty bitty detail things. I don't really get on with that much. So that's like astrology, ley lines, um, sacred geometry, all of those things that I just don't understand, can't get on with, don't, un don't just don't get. Very airy thought type things that 
big old rock like me just doesn't understand. But it was quite an interesting addition to the series. It definitely reads like one of the kind of filler set them up so the next one can knock them down type books. In that vein, I have already gone on to reading And It Harm None, which is book 13. And I've been excited about that because it just seems like the title alone makes it sound like something dramatic is going to happen. Although I did have to have a little giggle because I flipped it over to read the blurb because I can never really remember which book is which. And I was just trying to like let myself know what was going to happen in this one. And the first two lines of the quite short blurb are, Annie, Kate and Cooper uncover what looks like a crime. When they look more closely, it is not. Does that or does that not sound like the least thrilling thing you've heard in your life? Nevertheless, I persisted. Uh, I'm cracking into that one quite quickly. I'm hoping that I can get the rest of the series just finished by the end of the week, which would be great, um, because I'm kind of done with them now. I'm getting a little bit bored of the characters. Not a lot of stuff is happening, so I'm hoping this one can shake things up a little bit. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and that you're enjoying the circle of three episodes so far. And we'll stay tuned for the next couple of ones just to finish out the series with me. Please, I need someone, just anyone, to like bond with me and understand what I'm going through having to read all these books. But if you'd like to get in touch, let me know if you've decided to read some of these for yourself. Where you found your copies of them? Was it Delaware Public Library? You can get in touch on Twitter, which is at WitchFix, or by Gmail, which is witchfixpodcast at gmail.com. As always, you can donate to my Patreon, which is in the description box of this episode. And don't forget to check out on Twitter. I have a request list up of different books that I can't wait to review. So if you want to send me something anonymously via Amazon, you are more than welcome. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye! <laughs>